Hello and welcome to Views on News. I am Jawad Hami. After the resolve of the entire nation and the immense sacrifices by the armed forces of Pakistan and the law enforcement agencies, Pakistan gave a decisive blow to the scourge of terrorism. And uh, many years passed in peace, but now the country is faced with this scourge once again. There has been a surge of violent terrorist activities uh, in different parts of the country, particularly the recent months of witnessed uh, terror incidents in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province as well as in Balochistan province. A couple of days before, the federal capital Islamabad was also hit by an incident of suicide bombing and there was a loss of life. Also, now the banned groups like the tehreek e taliban Pakistan and Baloch Liberation Army uh, are operating from uh, the Afghan soil. Yesterday, uh, across Balochistan on Sunday, at least six security personnel embraced martyrdom while around 17 were injured and uh, there, were, uh, there was a spate of different incidents across the Balochistan province and the banned Baloch, Balochistan Liberation Army claimed the responsibility for this. Now after this particular uptick in violent terror incidents across different parts of the country, uh, Pakistan's authorities had been urging the interim Afghan authorities led by the Afghan Taliban to fulfill their commitment they made to the international community. Not only Pakistani authorities, but also the United Nations has urged the Afghan Taliban to end all terror activities on the Afghan soil that pose a threat to Pakistan. At the same time, the United States of America has extended unconditional support and help to Pakistan in order to deal with this particular threat. And according to Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Bilal Bhutto Zardari, the United States also has extended funding to enhance security along the Pak-Afghan border. Now, Pakistan's top leadership had been condemning these incidents, saying the hard-earned gains and successes in the war on terror would not be allowed to be wasted by anyone and the writ of the state would be established at all costs. They pay tributes to all those people who lay down their lives uh, in the defense of the motherland, also saying that the entire nation in unity will be continue to wage the war against uh, terror. Now, how to engage with the Afghan Taliban? What to expect from them in order to uh, eliminate that very uh, threat of uh, the banned groups like uh, the Tariq Taliban Pakistan, as well as the banned Baloch, Balochistan Liberation Army? And what should be expected from the international community and also from the United Nations and also the regional powers, including uh, China and Iran, and also the Central Asian states regarding this particular threat. And what needs to be done at home? Does this time call for the national unity, more political stability, and more political maturity among all the political stakeholders in the country? And to look into the answers of these questions, we are honored to have been joined in the studio by Mr. Air Marshal retired Farad Hussain Khan. He's president Center for Aerospace and Security Studies. He uh, took over the center as the president on 13th of September 2021. He is recipient of Sitare Imtiaz Military, Hilal Imtiaz Military, and Sitare Basalat. Air Marshal retired Farad Hussain Khan, thank you very much for taking time out for views on news tonight. We really appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, at the same time, we are honored to have been joined by Dr. Shabana Fiaz. She's a chairperson in defense and strategic studies, Qadi Azam University in Islamabad. Dr. Shabana, thank you very much for your time also for being on Views on News tonight. We really appreciate that. And at the same time on Skype, we are being joined by Dr. Jamil Khan. He's former ambassador. Dr. Jamil Khan, thank you very much for your time also for My being pleasure. on Views on News tonight. We really appreciate that. Let me begin the discussion with you, Mr. Farad. Now, after the international troops withdrawal, uh, since Pakistan has always advocated a peaceful, stable, and prosperous Afghanistan, and also vigorously facilitated, uh, facilitated the peace and reconciliation process over there, so there was an expectation that this particular threat from these banned outfits who had taken safe havens over there in Afghanistan uh, what be happening after the international troops uh, withdrawal since the Afghan Taliban had made the commitment with the international community, especially in the Doha peace deal, that the Afghan soil won't be allowed to be used against any other country, especially the neighbors. Uh, but we have seen 
uh, surge in violent terrorist activities claimed um, most of the time by the band Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan. What do you think why the Afghan Taliban couldn't handle this problem and couldn't fulfill their commitment they made to the international community? Uh, Bismillah uh, ar Thank you very much uh, for inviting me on a subject so important to our national security. Uh, terrorism, uh, if you go back, has a history in the region and uh, we've been facing it. We have gone through a lot of losses economically uh, as well as life lost. And finally, uh, with uh, national unity and the strength of the armed forces, after the ABS incident in 2014, we had started moving forward towards positive side. And these results were coming, and they did come, and we started to get sign of relief, and then life became normal in Pakistan, particularly in the border provinces like the KPK and Rajasthan. Uh, what happened after that is need to be analyzed. So number one is we need to know the causes of this. What has happened that the incidents have got started going up, not only going up in numbers, but also in intensity. Uh, the day before yesterday and then before that, these are terrible incidents. Uh, I think Afghanistan, the change in Afghanistan that resulted in withdrawal of the U.S. troops as a part, uh, part of the Doha Agreement, and plus other dynamics that, taken, that took place in Afghanistan, we were very hopeful as pa uh, Pakistan, as a neighbor, as a Muslim country, as a friendly country, that we will have positive uh, things on our border and in the, and we'll move forward both economically and, and connect ourselves to prosperous together. Uh, but that did not happen, I think. There are factors, internal and external. Uh, internal, Afghanistan and Pakistan, external means the international community. Uh, Afghanistan, uh, since 20, uh, August of 21, uh, when they uh, got, uh, when the Americans left, he is this not been really stable, barring the initial few months. Uh, why? Because the stability in Afghanistan would mean stability in Pakistan that probably did not suit some domestically and internationally. So we need to find the find that. We, uh, Pakistan uh, is a large country, we have suffered enough, we were looking forward to a breather which is not, uh, which is being taken away from us. I think inside Pakistan and Afghanistan, uh, these elements, TTP and BLA that you're talking, keep crossing across and therefore, uh, uh, and an Afghanistan government, despite their promises to the international community, is not lived up to its uh, that is one. And uh, we need to handle that uh, diplomatically and, and firmly on that count. And maybe involve the UN or So like why do you think they couldn't handle it? Was it the question of their intent or was it the question of their uh, capacity or the capability to deal with that threat? Uh, I think both. Uh, uh, capacity maybe, but not a factor to that level because when it comes to their internal law and order for their uh, own issues, it's not that bad when it comes to that. Uh, they have uh, probably not realized the severity that we are facing out of uh, this TTP. And uh, we went through the negotiations with their support and uh, we continue to have the problems. So that is number one. We need to take with Afghans firmly that they must follow the Doha Accord Agreement and not allow their soil to be used. Uh, we must do whatever we can because it is causing us serious damages. That is one. Secondly, I think uh, the international community also left Afghanistan alone. And uh, they may be using it as pressure on the world uh, as, as a tool to get us to uh, the, the place that they. So I think uh, Afghanistan needs to be engaged to not only motivate them, but also tell them firmly the resolve of Pakistan as well as the international community that it is an international phenomena, terrorism is a global phenomena, it does not have any borders. Although we may be suffering today, but tomorrow it could be somebody else's turn. So I think the Afghanistan has to be engaged in that is number one. 
The other thing is, since the incidents are taking place in Pakistan, we need to check the border ourselves. You know, the border crossing, if you recall, the first six, eight months of, uh, the, of after the withdrawal were relatively peaceful. So I think the border crossing has to be uh, implemented very uh, strictly in terms of people crossing the border. That has to be checked. Uh, uh, we, 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 do have, we do have fence, and we do have a fence, but I think we need to make it more effective. But uh, there, mm -hmm. there have been elements on the other side of the border uh, making this particular border fencing also uh, controversial, but uh, uh, we'll be talking about this particular thing also. Of course, it was the need of the time and the kind of infiltration from the across the border it was happening, so it was very crucial for Pakistan's uh, survival in order to deal with that threat. Uh, Dr. Shabana, there, uh, there a certain media reports suggest that the Afghan Taliban had already been uh, promising the Pakistan's authorities that yes, we have made the commitment in the Doha peace deal with the international community that want that we won't allow the Afghan soil to be used against any other country, especially when it comes to Pakistan and the kind of role Pakistani authorities have played uh, in the Afghan peace and reconciliation uh, process and had advocated a peaceful and stable Afghanistan. Now, uh, certain media reports suggest there is a statement uh, by uh, the Afghan Taliban spokesperson Zabiola Mujahid uh, that the impression that the TTP leadership is in Afghanistan was incorrect. So that depicts it. It is an utter denial that uh, they, they're not um, accepting the fact that the TTP has the safe havens over there across the border in Afghanistan and they're launching their attacks from there. Yes, very rightly you have said. I think what is happening in Afghanistan and what Pakistan is facing uh, across the border, not only in uh, KP but also in Balochistan and also coming into the capital as well. And uh, it is a mix of many factors. A uh, Doha agreement and the withdrawal of US and the led forces was in haste. Agreement was concluded after a long you know, uh, debates and everything. But the fact of the matter is we must also recognize that Taliban regime is not an internationally recognized regime. It is a de facto regime and Pakistan and other countries have been dealing with them on basis of humanitarianism. And being the why? Because being the neighboring country, we cannot afford and we should not be, uh, you know, making them an isolated in the system because after all, we have to look at the well-being of the people. So having said this, yes, Taliban's, I firstly say that uh, we should not be viewing only the TTP as a creation or something that has come out of blue from Afghanistan. They were there, they were busted, they were made to run and they took the shelter in Afghanistan that was under civil war insurgencies <coughs> and when the Taliban took over we also have to be very careful that in the analysis we have always at most of the time ignored that the TTP fighters also fought along with the Taliban Afghanistan factions and there has been a crisscross linkages of these TTP groups with the BLA and other groups not only these RR and other group even some have gone the splinter into the ISK as well so there is a mismatch of many so, things but no, uh, that makes the equation very uh, interesting and very dangerous at the same time. Now, during the previous administrations, uh, Pakistani authorities had been uh, asking them to take a concrete action, especially mm -hmm. against the TTP. Mm -hmm. uh, but we uh, have uh, clear reports uh, that there was a nexus of the Indian uh, spy agency RAW mm -hmm. with the National Directorate of Security in Afghanistan also. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they were also facilitating and financing uh, the band outfits over there. So that made a sense that it was an adversary from the eastern side which was colluding with the administration over there in order to finance and facilitate those band outfits. So now when there was a change of regime in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. since Pakistan had advocated a peaceful and stable Afghanistan and also, again, I reiterate that uh, uh, facilitated the peace process over there. So mm. wasn't it time for the Afghan Taliban to realize that there should be a reciprocation uh, rather, uh, rather than uh, their hand, joining their hands with the TTP, they should be fulfilling their promise and take a concrete action against the TTP over there. Uh, let me take your first part of the question. Yes, there has always been an adversarial state's involvement, whether it is, you know, the, as labeled uh, or said by the India or by the other factors involving that are anti-Pakistan, whether they are state, whether they are non-state. And of course, the governments of the successive regimes in Afghanistan were also blamed for that. But I think it was a gross miscalculation 
even on the Pakistan part to think that when the Taliban of Khan Taliban will come, everybody, everything like the TTP will come and will be, you know, given to us on a platter that here are your culprits. It will never happen. Why? Because even if there is a will within Taliban's, like the Sirajuddin Haqqani and others, they have initiated, but the, there is a limit to their influence. Because the insurgents are one thing, but when they come to power, you know, governance is different thing. And to control a non-state actor who has come into a part, although being popular, to control an other non-state actor is a big is a so big thing. So what does that imply? Is it uh, I the think question it's, of it, intent or the capacity? I think it is a question of intent because there are very much disputes, as the story suggests, very divisions and the cleavages <coughs> have come up with the cracks are there within the Afghanistan the Taliban. Because you know there are issues of handling of women, there are issues of handling of the economic issues. There, they are actually uh, more than one year has passed, but still we don't see much, you know, of something coming up. It is primarily because of sanctions and primarily because of their own confusion or maybe a neglect of what is happening on ground. Right. Uh, let me bring in the discussion, Dr. Jamil Khan, former ambassador. Also, uh, Dr. Jamil, um, you've seen that the Afghan Taliban had been making promises. Uh, especially towards the Pakistani authorities that the Afghan soil wouldn't be allowed to be used against uh, <coughs> Pakistan. And now there is an utter denial by the spokesperson that the impression that the TTP is there in uh, Afghanistan is incorrect. Now, when there is such an utter denial, so what options do you think remain at the hands of the Pakistani authorities in order to engage with the Afghan Taliban uh, regarding this particular matter? In fact, we um, uh, in Pakistan, we have definitely some advantages if we like to exploit those advantages and try and have uh, engagement in the in the right fashion with the Afghan Taliban. Um, as has already been pointed out by the other two guests, um, the miscalculation, number one. Number two, the optimism which we had raised after Taliban had taken over in August 2021, the once they had seized the power. At that time, the optimism, and uh, based on that optimism, we were not really making our preparation the way we want. Uh, we were required to. Now, having said so, uh, Taliban, Taliban denial that the the Afghan soil is not being uh, used. That is basically they have given an undertaking on and signed it on the 28th February 2021 in Doha Agreement Part Two. They are very clearly they have given this undertaking to the United States. And then that was also tabled in the Security Council. Um, uh, so that has the stamp of the Security Council. And Security Council reiterated the same agreement during its session on 25th of um, August 2021 and followed by another Security Council session. And then you know, there were one or two more. So every time it was reiterated that Afghanistan Taliban would not be uh, be giving any access or the soil would not be used by any other terrorist group. The women right, children right, minority right, all inclusive government. So all those factors were already incorporated. Regarding the denial of the Afghan Taliban, I think uh, if we play our cards properly, both at the international level and uh, and, and our um, direct engagement with Afghanistan through the tribal means and through the other means, what we the advantages which we have with them. Uh, in, in, in that case, we can always let them know, look, you know, there's the monitoring team of the Security Council, which has um, uh, given the proof of the TTP and other um, uh, terrorist groups who are still operating from Afghanistan. So we cannot really, they cannot simply deny it because it's not only Pakistan which is asking them to help uh, or asking them to control. Uh, and and do not allow people to really cross the border and use their soil. That is one aspect. In fact, that needs to be further uh, deliberated with not only Taliban, but also the international community. Um, the humanitarian uh, organization, which are working there, in fact, uh, they, could be, they, they, they could be engaged in uh, bringing pressure on the Afghanistan Taliban. So uh, there's a multi-pronged multi approach has to be really directed towards the Afghan Taliban. Um, we've been trusting them fine enough because we know that uh, right from the days of 79 onward, uh, the Mujahideen and then Mujahideen turn in Taliban and the way we've been uh, helping them out in, in uh, from uh, various standpoint, 
both at the national and international level. Uh, so if if we try and engage them in that fashion where, uh, with which we've been engaging them in, 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 the, in, the, in the past occasions, then in that case, uh, probably we might as well reach to some con conclusion. Tal Taliban, not only that there is capacity problem, but there is an ideology problem. Taliban and TTP and other groups, they've been fighting um, uh, uh, together uh, against the, uh, the, the NATO forces in Afghanistan and prior to that against the Soviet Union forces so, in Dr. Afghanistan. So, Dr. Nilsson, beg your pardon for the interruption. This is a very important point that you've highlighted. They had been waging war against the foreign invaders. So that's why they took up the arms against them. So uh, since the international troops have withdrawn completely uh, from there, so what happens to be the justification of launching terror attacks using the Afghan soil on a neighboring country, which had been facilitating the peace process? No, they are against the, uh, the kind of government which we have, and it's not once they have uh, very clearly stipulated it in past, and they are, uh, from their mind and heart, they want a Sharia law in Pakistan as well. Uh, they, in many respects, in particularly the TTP and uh, quite a few members of the Afghan Taliban also, they feel that we have collided with the West and therefore they even allege us, allege Pakistani uh, security forces as the infidel. Uh, so uh, there are multiple factors, you know, and uh, at their grassroots level, the way uh, the indoctrination has taken place and we were mentioning about our um, uh, enemies and our, our the countries who are uh, such as India where the raw has maximum budget allocation for its operation against Pakistan by using Afghanistan soil. They had packed up and they had gone. Once Af Afghanistan had seized the power, uh, they thought, the Indians had thought that perhaps uh, um, the Taliban would start um, uh, controlling those people, but those tentacles which uh, uh, Indian Roy, uh, Roy uh, had in Afghanistan, they've been now again flourished and they're now being again used as the indicators are um, emerging from Afghanistan. So it's it's uh, a complex and uh, multi-layered uh, compli complexities uh, which, which we, can, we are witnessing. And uh, this, uh, as we were discussing earlier, again, the entire nation has to join their heads and hands together the way they did it at the time of Radul Fasad and uh, uh, Zarbi Azb. So that is one aspect and one angle. But, you know, there was some weaknesses which was left in implementing, in implementing national action plan, which had the, uh, the, the, the consultation of the entire country through their leaders of all the parties. And uh, their, their uh, point number 10, which was the registration of seminaries, point, no, point number 12, where, which uh, FATA uh, reform, which we could not do, and point number 19 of the nation, National Action Plan of Afghan refugees, which you have seen what is happening in the province of Sindh and other places. So, and the coordination, the NECTA, under, uh, under the point number four, uh, the NECTA could not be reactivated. So this is a package now. On one side, we have to show our strength because we have already shown our weakness by uh, during the negotiation, the way we negotiated, the this way... Is, this is uh, a very important point. Dr. Jamil Khan, please hold your uh, thought over here. We'll come back to this very particular point of the need uh, uh, of the revival of the National Action Plan, how to uh, re-implement it in the letter and spirit and uh, the negotiations of the Pakistani authorities in the past uh, opened with the Band Tariqa Taliban Pakistan. What sort of an impact uh, those negotiations had? Now, Mr. Farad, when we talk about the role of the international community, you also uh, you mentioned that it is of a crucial importance and also Dr. Jamil Khan. Now, when it comes to international community, especially the UN, as Mr. Jamil Khan also mentioned that uh, the humanitarian organizations working over there should be taken on board in order to deal with the Afghan authorities over there. Now, when it comes to the UN, the United Nations Secretary General categorically urged uh, the Afghan Taliban to end all terror activities uh, that pose a threat to Pakistan. And you also said that we are actively engaged with the Afghan Taliban in this regard. So what sort of an expectation uh, the Pakistani authorities can have out of this particular engagement, especially by the UN or its assistance mission that is working over there? Uh, 
actually uh, uh, problem is uh, complicated uh, when you say what to expect. This is not a very fair word. Uh, since we are the ones facing it, so we, we, are, we are the fun. The international back. community also expected from Pakistan. Pakistan became the front line ally in the war on terror for over two decades. So there was an yeah, expectation we, from the international community. Yeah. Naturally, it's the time for them to reciprocate yeah. and come up to the expectation of Pakistan also. Agreed. We should demand it from them. We should. That means we should engage the world. But what I am saying is the region gets more affected than the globe. So the countries on Afghanistan needs to be engaged and then put pressure on Afghanistan collectively if possible, if not all countries, selective countries with a friendly relationship and are around Afghanistan. We have a common objective that the, the, prom, uh, the promise of not letting the soil used is not only for Pakistan, it's for the world. Mm. So although we are affected maximum, but when it escalates, the others will also start to feel the heat sometimes. This is one. Secondly, we, we, why I use the word uh, it's not fair, we clearly know that India is involved in it. But leaving some period of six, six to eight months or so when the uh, US troops withdrew, Indians also ran away from that place. After that, they have, they have been getting back uh, into the field. Now, anything that happened, stability in Pakistan doesn't suit the Indians. Stability in Afghanistan does not suit them because we will get benefit out of this. Peaceful Afghanistan is the best interest of Pakistan that we have said and, and, and the region. So I think the region needs to be engaged, the globe needs to be engaged and we need to tell them, give them the evidence of Indian involvement into this because how, I, I, what I am saying is that they can keep saying what they, but have they told this to Indians, okay, okay stop it, it will take. Our so effort what more than needs that. to be done so on that front? Because local, there was a comprehensive dossier yes. that was shared by yes. the Pakistani authorities yes. most recently yes, with absolutely. the United Nations Secretary General as well as with the UN Security Council. Now what happens to be uh, the uh, responsibility of the international community? So should the sanctions be considered by the UN Security Council when there is a clear cut and indisputable evidence against the Indian uh, state sponsorship of terrorism? Yeah, that's what I'm we need to lift the momentum, pick up this further. Yes, we've shown them one dozier on the eastern, uh, uh, something that happened uh, in Lahore blast, but we have doziers this side also. We need to take this up front to the world before we start to lose our lives more than what we'll. So we have to, what I'm saying, number one, we need to uh, tighten our belt and then take our steps uh, to, to do whatever we can physically and uh, uh, diplomatically with Afghanistan, one. Then we need to engage the region and, and, and then we need to engage the world, particularly United Nations and expose whosoever is causing this destabilization in the region. But and, and all these things combined will start to show off some effects and that is what we can do. We, we don't have to get into kinetic means to engage you know, with Afghanistan, it's our neighbor. We need to, but one thing is, another thing that we need to remember is that Afghanistan is not that engaged by the world. Since 2021 August, they're isolated, some kind of an isolation. So they're they're, 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 don't you think they're because isolated because they couldn't fulfill any of the promises they made in the Doha peace deal, whether forming the inclusive government, whether it was giving the women their rights, they are banning them from going to the university. At the same time, they're also banning the international NGOs not to take the women employees at the same time also. So there are definitely, if the regional country support ha has to be uh, brought in in this particular matter, of course, the regional countries have the interests also when we talk about uh, the Russians, they want the inclusive government over yeah. there. So China is, of course, um, interested in the regional connectivity. So, I mean, if they are not fulfilling even a single promise of the Doha peace deal, then how the regional support can be uh, brought in? I agree that Afghanistan is not fulfilling the promises, right? So what do we do? We can't sit back. The world has to move forward and then get them on table and put them on table. Okay, okay look, this is, you are violating this, this, this. Abhi kya ho it's, it's just statements coming from the UN, from the United States, from world, from their own capitals. Let's engage them on the ground. Put them on the table. Look, you are doing this, 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 and we know it. We will react collectively if you if you don't uh, uh, come to the terms. Terms means get on to the frequency of the world that the world needs. Peace. 
you need to give rights to the women educa women education they need to stop interfering in the uh, 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 friendly country uh, or bordering countries so all these promises have to be made the word what i am saying is multi pronged pakistan must put pressure engage diplomatically region must engage and the world must come to uh, so mr fazal you already it. mentioned that they, uh, these might be the pressure tactics on the part yeah, of the afghan yeah, yeah. authorities Afghan's for for getting what, uh, the international recognition two is things. that so two things uh, recognition is uh, yes two things putting pressure on pakistan also because there are a lot of sympathizers uh, of taliban yeah. in pakistan and when when something happens you start to you feel it you know the the, the, the some yeah. waves coming within also uh, sometimes so so they are putting pressure on pakistan they are putting pressure on the international community for getting recognition for getting their money back that is frozen so all these things are part of the tactics without fulfilling their promises without, without fulfilling, fulfilling their Do promises yeah uh, dr shabana so what to expect from the international community especially the un assistance <coughs> mission over there and the kind of statement that has come from the united nations secretary general yes i i think we expect a lot we we deserve that why because one one case is proven uh, the narrative that has already been sold uh, earlier and i firmly believe in it that pakistan has been a victim of terrorism and this was something that was uh, played unfounded by the india and the other adversaries that no they are the givers you know spoilers in the game of peace so this has really proved although we also need to understand that ttp and others were germinated in parts in pakistan and they were allied across the border and they were used by the adversaries against the country now so this is one thing now international community has is very sensitive on that it is not only that what pakistan and the us is thinking of doing our foreign minister has hinted at that the us may be able to you know invest more in afghanistan pakistan borderlands or for security purpose the important point is that whether it is russia whether it is china whether it is all are nerved because there is an imu presence in afghanistan there is a isk presence in afghanistan there is a etam presence in afghanistan so they have the uh, pockets which are a source of danger to all central asian to russian to chinese to iran and others and then what we have seen in case of uh, afghan taliban is that they have only acted against the isk khorasan that is a chapter of isis because they chal uh, they are in adversary with their philosophy so, <coughs> so the rest of them they are been working in and out so regarding the ttp i think when we say about the international uh, community is it is already banned it is on the list you know their un list it is on the us state department ban and other organization we have faced a lot of issues because of these organizations uh, fatf issues and many other issues because we have streamlined that pakistan has come you know has come proven itself that we are clean you know and we have tightened our belts what i think personally i feel is that and the time is ripe we don't need a national action plan all public are with the state there is a one narrative when there were few splinters coming into the sawat after a sort of a peace so called peace there is a huge you know public protest against this taliban so they had to run away and there had to be some options other options created so the public is all there with the narrative that they are anti state what we need to cut is whether it is internationally supported adversely supported afghan taliban supported or whatever angel supported i feel we need to cut the sleeper cells we need to cut the handlers and the pockets who have always been there and this is not unique to pakistan it is in usa in russia in china across in europe what has happened recently in france and others so it is always there but it really demands you know we need pakistan don't need to be nervous at all what we are fearing is okay five here ten there it's okay to me it i feel that we will come up we will rise again we have already risen so our agencies our kinetic operation non kinetic means negotiation skills have all seasoned so if the pakistan itself becomes a very nervous state that's what our enemies and adversaries want i think that we will be losing the you know the uh, we will be losing the confidence within ourselves we don't need the you know the drones the, i think the, we the, are the, capable the, of doing the, it ourselves 
Dr. Shibana, the facilitation and the financing of this uh, particular uh, menace, uh, uh, we've seen Pakistan's, Pakistan's authorities giving the comprehensive dossiers, and uh, Mr. Bilal Bhutto Zadari has also said that our intelligence agencies have solid proof of financial and organizational support and direction provided to the TTP by the agents of our eastern neighbor by, uh, and by the elements of the previous government in Kabul. Now, yes. that happens to be the responsibility of the international. If you choke the financing and facilitation, of course, this is not going to result into the kind of terror incidents uh, that we are witnessing. I agree right now. with you. That's exactly my uh, you know, counterpart has said here. You know, responsibility, ethics, this is one thing. Perception is what reality, rationalism, kinetic means, and to, to use your power for the nation state security is a real thing. And I think Pakistan has to fuse both. Look at the Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, what he has said. We have the proofs, we have given the dossiers, but the US is also willing to support us. For an, an analytical point of view, it is message carries both. You know, we are going to have a major collaboration to weed out these elements, but I will not stop here. I think we should not be only hinting at the US, we should also be bringing in Chinese. And because we don't want to be again in the camps, choosing the camps, confronting our enemy. Right, Dr. Jamil Khan, your take regarding this particular thing, expectation from the UN, the US and other regional countries, and especially when it comes to choking the financing and facilitation of this particular threat, especially by the eastern neighbor of Pakistan. Well, uh, there are uh, two, three mechanisms to deal with such situation, and that's how it has been done all over the world, whenever such situation would emerge. Now, number one is the legal diplomacy. Number two is the traditional diplomacy. And number three is the public diplomacy. So we have to really work on all these three streams of diplomacy. That's number one. And other implementation part, I think we have proved our metal. Our forces have proved, uh, pro proved its metal by controlling the terrorism, at least uh, terrorism um, uh, uh, of the kind which had emerged at that time, its permanent solution is altogether different. And permanent solution, as I was indicating, has been already embedded into the National Action Plan. And for that, and for that, you need a lot of budget and you need a lot of resources as well. Now, at this point in time, again, as I said, we have three streams to follow. And those uh, the 131 pages of dossier which we had given, that dossier needed to be um, uh, well advocated through all our missions, through the universities abroad, through our friends abroad, and through the countries where we have the um, human rights activists very active. So some of those things have not been done as yet. And once that happens, the bottoms of pressure, it builds up. And then, the, uh, and then the resolution is moved in the Security Council, where the veto power people are also under pressure to consider that veto power country. And um, unless that <coughs> happens, the United Nations Charter, the United Nations Char Ch Charter of Ch Ch Chapter 5, Chapter 6, Chapter 7 cannot be invoked. And unless that is invoked, the pressure on the neighboring country like India or the pressure on Afghanistan Taliban would not be mounted the way we are expecting or the way ideally it should be. So these things, it needs a lot of consistency. It needs a lot of, lot, lot of continuity after submitting the dossier, a lot of consistency and continuity in our diplomat diplomacy, in our, the field of our diplomatic work. So that, that is the one one important factor, which um, in the, from my perspective, that the tribal linkage, tribal linkage, we have utilized it, but I think we could have done more in that uh, in order to build the pressure. We know that there are common interests from our side, tribal, tribal, uh, tribals of our side and tribals, including Taliban on that side about the fence. They don't agree to have this fence, uh, the way it has been, uh, and we had to do that to, to stop the cross-fertilization uh, of the insects. Right, uh, Dr. Jamil Khan, when it comes to um, enhancing the security at the border, so uh, 
has already been discussed, this particular border fencing was aimed at regulating uh, the trade over here and uh, check that cross-border infiltration of such elements and also to check that illicit uh, drug trafficking. Now, it was very crucial for Pakistan's interest as well as the interest on the other side of the border. Why do you think the uh, certain elements from other side of the border try to uproot this at uh, different instances also? And what needs to be done in order to impress upon the authorities on the other side to play their part also in order to make it safe and secure? That's right. There are two aspects of it. One is their interest, indigenous interest. One cousin is here, the other brother is on that side, the third cousin is on the, our side, the fourth cousin on that side. So they would be, always be having a very free access. In the garb of that, they, the smuggling was, was going on. In the garb of that, the cross-border, uh, the, the infiltration was going on. So this was an essential thing. The bigger question is that while we started having this fence, did we have a thorough consultative process between the tribes and between the both side of the people living on the uh, both side, I think we were short of that. We should have done a little more. Now even we can do that. As I was saying that we have very strong tribal linkages. We have very patriotic tribe, uh, tribal people on our side and uh, they, they are engaging with Afghanistan side also. So that asset, we should try and utilize it. And that is where we can enhance our engagement besides, besides the fact that uh, the Afghan Taliban, and there are certain elements in Afghan Taliban, they are really, really very, very far Pakistan. But how, to what extent they are being listened in the whole cabinet in Afghanistan, the whole system of Afghanistan, that's another point to be um, uh, to be examined. Right. So, uh, so from that, that, that standpoint, uh, the international community, the regional, as we were discussing, particularly China, they have their stakes. They took in the, uh, Russia. They, uh, they, they all have their stakes in that. And they are quietly working there, including Iran, in Afghanistan. Now, we have to really enhance, enhance that before we move the resolution in the Security Council. The, the world community, uh, the, the, the United States, uh, the White House has made statement that they want to really help Pakistan out, assist Pakistan out. But then we are just walking on a very thin line because um, the, their footprint and, um, uh, the, and the kind of a help depends what kind of a help. And the, our um, the, the friend China, to what extent they feel that it would impact the, um, the CPAC and other things. So this is a whole complex matter, but we can strike Great. a balance and just walk, walk um, uh, through this tight rope and still right. try and engage ourselves and plus try and uh, get the resolution moved in the Security Council. Unless we do that, our neighboring country, which is now again exploiting the soil of the Afghanistan, besides other factors, they will continue uh, doing that as they've been doing it in the past. Right. Yes. Uh, Dr. Jamil Khan, your point is uh, well taken. Uh, Mr. Farad, very briefly, we are unfortunately short of time. Uh, when Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zadari says that we uh, should be uh, going for the hammer and anvil strategy in order to deal with this threat with the cooperation of the Afghan authorities. At the same time, uh, he says that Pakistan is not going to tolerate this uh, cross-border terrorism and Islamabad reserve the right to take direct action against them. So what does that imply? Uh, 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 does it imply that an action in kinetic, uh, kinetic domain, uh, if sir, nothing is done uh, by the Afghan Taliban in that regard? Sir, I fully support this statement. Uh, reason being, let's look back shortly. I will just take 30 seconds. We, we suffered 150 billion, 80,000 people and all that. How much did the world, world were kept, still kept saying do more? We, we were always on the defensive on this front. So, so what, what I'm trying to emphasize, we take all these measures, engage the region, engage the international community, go into UN for resolution, all that, but we must take firm actions. When we, as a sovereign state, have given a statement, we will take all action, we must exhibit that. Dr. Shibana, your take regarding this particular statement, Islamabad reserve the right to take 
direct action against the banned outfits like DDB. I think there is no second question about it. We have exercised it in the past and uh, in Afghanistan and otherwise. And I think we have proven it that it was a justified action. But this must go with the coercive diplomacy that has always been in practice, whether <laughs> dealing with the, you know, the trade within the two countries or the movement of the Afghan refugees. Right. Dr. Jamil Khan, your take uh, uh, regarding this particular statement by Foreign Minister, Islamabad reserved the right to take direct action against them, the TTP I, I, I think and BL. We have already done it, you know, we had pursued the terrorists to Kunar and we took actions against them. And uh, if uh, it doesn't stop, the Taliban should be very clearly made to understand that we will take action and we can we can do the we can uh, go in, in pursuit of these terrorists who are causing these difficulties. The terrorism acts have doubled it you know the gunny time it was 218 and now it has gone almost 423 or the above 420 so we just cannot you know um, uh, tolerate it anymore we have to really show our muscle and strength the way we have been showing and at the same time as i was mentioning multi-pronged multi-dimensional approach towards solving this problem both at the international level and the regional and the bilateral level yes Right, your point is well taken. Dr. Jamil Khan, former ambassador, joining us on Skype. Thank you very much for being on Views on News tonight. We really appreciate uh, your time. We were also joined in the studio by Air Marshal Retired Mr. Farad Hussain Khan, President, Center for Aerospace and Security Studies. Mr. Farad, thank, thank you. you very much for your time, also for being on Views on News. And Dr. Shabana Fiaz, Chairperson, Defense and Strategic Studies, Kaidi Azam University, Islamabad. Dr. Shabana, thank you very much for your time thank for you. being on Views on News tonight. We really appreciate that and that's all from today's views on news until the next one take good care of yourselves